It is Restore the Floor, your Pistons NBA podcast with Evan Jenkins. I'm Stoney. Hope everybody has a wonderful Memorial Day weekend coming up. Uh, the NBA Finals, not exactly set. Kind of thought they would be, but the Boston Celtics did show some guts and some heart and won a game on the road. Were you surprised by that at all? Yes. So was I, only because they had fallen so flat, looked like they gave up in game three. Like, how do they get up for game four? And boy, did they. And they were getting killed nationally for, you know, all the talk shows and, then you know, they quit, they did this, they did that. And I didn't think they had anything in them. And especially since their coach has just been, you know, getting crucified. I thought they, and it started off, you know, Miami played good. I give give the Celtics credit for what they did in the second half. Tatum decided he didn't want to go out a complete loser. Absolutely. Well, at the end of the first half, what Miami went on a 14 to three run or something like yeah. that. And I'm like, that's it. Yeah. Good night. Like you take all their confidence away and no good for Boston. Now, uh, do you expect them to win the next game? Yeah. It's so in Boston I. and then things get interesting. And I know people get excited about their, you know, little jinx things that goes on I, with me, with the Tigers, with Eduardo Rodriguez. But I thought it was pretty interesting that they showed two people who were in the stands at the game last night, Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez, who were <laughs> on the Yankees. The only time they, in baseball where a team, a Boston a team, team came back, came back from three down and, and won. I don't know. It'll be something else. Yeah. I mean, I know A Rod was at game three. I don't know Jeets went too, but yeah. Wow. How about those two hanging out together? That's crazy. I don't know. You know, I don't remember if they were actually sitting with each other or they just showed okay. I, I, I don't know. But Kepka got all the publicity, both that and the hockey game. God. Too. I mean, yeah, that hockey video where he didn't blink for like 20 <laughs> seconds. And I'm like, you know what? Hey, what the hell? You want a PGA? So be it. Yes. Right. I mean, good for the, the South Florida fans. I mean, it's, it's, it's they're pretty, living life right we're, now. We're jealous. I mean, they already have perfect le- weather and then they have every woman on South beach that walks around in the thong. And now you got every sports team, right? That's what the Marlins, what are they going to go to the world series now? Probably I I might as well bet on that. Two is going to be the MVP. <laughs> yeah. Jalen Waddle's going to have like yes. 1800 receiving yes. yards. Yeah. All right. So, but back to basketball, I mean, he didn't do that much yesterday, but it's kind of nice to see, from a local perspective, I know you hate school, but Duncan Robinson almost getting a rebirth could look like he was done. It's crazy to me. And he has the greenest of green lights when he's out there too, which right. is impressive. See, I don't I don't despise Duncan Robinson because I see him as a D3 player, not right. a Michigan player. <laughs> so and and I root for the guy. You I root really for do. all Williams NBA players. I mean, it's just it, it's it's interesting to see that a guy can sit on the bench all year long. Like what was Spolster seeing that he didn't need him then, but now he needs it. It's, it's wild. And we've talked about the heat and the, the four undrafted free agents that are playing big minutes for him. And that's what we essentially want to see with the Pistons. And you know, but Kevin Love, given he's playing, so he's, you know, he's playing a he lot, but right quick, huh? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, he's playing pretty well, though. He is. He, I mean, and for his older, his limited pen, minutes, absolutely. And he dictated, he, that's where he wanted to go. Mm-hmm. So it, that's the one thing that I can appreciate when a player gets released or whatever, that they pick out a team and then that team actually goes all the way. Like, all right, well done. Yeah, he was smart not picking Philly. I heard it was between Philly and Miami. Never pick Philly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's a great place to grow up, but uh, if you want to be a, a player there and get booed, you know, what the hell. Uh, the other side, the Nuggets. Uh, I mean, everybody's talking about the Lakers, but the Nuggets are actually the team that won in four straight games, and they don't get enough credit for what they've done. You know, maybe a, a lot of it is because people don't get to see them play all year, but, you know, the fact that they have a two-time MVP who gets really very little publicity, and I think a lot of people's eyes were open by what he did in, in this series in this playoff so far he had one game where he wasn't very good but other than that he's, he's incredible he, he is incredible the, the shots he was making like when the shot clock expired and of oh, course we're talking about yoke fadeaways just like chucking it it looks yeah, like but those are good shots off balance and it's like what the, what are you doing and then boom and the other thing is with that team who thought jamal murray was going to be th- that great i mean he you know coming off the in the injury almost ruined his career well, I mean, just even coming out of college, you're like, okay, he's a nice player at, at Kentucky, but it, Cal, yeah, yeah, it yes, wasn't like right. a, a great team. And then he got to the NBA. Boy, this guy is unconscious out there. But how about all the former Pistons? I, I forgot that Ish Smith was on that team with the Nuggets. Well, so is Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. 
and uh, former Piston legend DeAndre Jordan. Remember, he was traded here in one uh, of those uh, trades. Do we, still, was... do we still pay for him this year? I don't know. But... Well, they also have KCP. Yep, and, and Bruce Brown. Uh, Bruce Brown. I mean, give Van Gundy credit for drafting. Uh, I think he was gone when they got rid of him. When they my, dealt him. I, I yeah, think... I think that was one of Weaver's first moves, actually. Yeah. It sucks. I mean, it's all, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, right. And, you know, Reggie Jackson was never going to excel here because oh, he no, was a, no. a 1A I have, I have, player. I have no problem. That's a guy that. that needed to come off the bench. Right. And he, he should never got a big contract. To begin with. Even when he was traded here, you know, people were excited. But you were playing behind MVP Russell Westbrook. Right. That was getting a triple-double. And You're, you were bitching about it. I know. That's crazy to me. And that's where I wasn't sold on him right off the bat. And, and so be it. But now we're in this position where we don't even have a coach. <laughs> We yeah. don't have a team, really. I, I don't know. know what's going on. So, we, uh, so, so I think we should root for Denver because they got the ex-Pistons. They have the ex-Pistons assistant coach. His son is their head coach. Who's that? Oh, Michael Malone. Michael Malone yeah. is Brendan Malone's son, yeah. who actually his first uh, assistant coaching job was under Campy at, at Oakland. Oh, so you can succeed if you coach at Oakland. Yeah, okay. She, yeah, she had. I, I thought that was a dead end job. Oh. <laughs> um, And so, but Stoney, let's we talk should, about. We should, the Lakers. We should talk about LeBron. A little bit. He's not done. No, right? I nobody don't think believes so. that. No, and he never said he was done. They were asking. Oh, we got to think about it. Yeah, but he, he, I don't think it was. Look, I'm not the hugest LeBron fan, and I'll pick on him when I think. I don't think he deserves to be. Yeah, we got a lot of calls on the show. Oh, he's just doing this for attention and the documentary crew and all that. I don't think so. I think he was just worn down physically, mentally. Uh, and, and you know what? He'll need some time to you know, decompress and he'll be fine. I actually disagree with that. I think everything that LeBron James does is very calculated. And I think just him saying, I don't know, I got it. Like, dude, all the way up until that day, you were talking about playing with your son. Your mm -hmm. son is two years away. And now he's backing off. Of, well, I don't know if Bronny wants to play with me. And I'm like, are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> like, he would die to play. You would like, think so. He's not going to play major D1 ball if he doesn't want to go to the NBA. True. You think he wants to go in and try to show his dad up? No. no. These kids have been next to him every step of the way, and LeBron has been a fabulous yes. father going to all of his kids' high school games. I don't remember Michael Jordan going to Jeffrey Jordan's games or Marcus Jordan's no. games. Like, like LeBron does. And now, that wasn't a social media world. I understand Correct. that. But it's just... I don't believe him. I think he's going to be back again. Do you oh, see the I betting odds? Right. I think he's definitely going to be back. I just, I, I believe that he just, you know, just going to chill out for a while. Do you see when, the betting odds? No. Where he could play next year if it's not the Lakers? No. It's, the favorite is the usual suspect, the New York Knickerbockers. Of course, because they think everybody wants to play in New At York. number two, your Philadelphia 76ers. Whoa. Could you imagine? I'd rather have him than Harden. Well, it looks like Harden's going to Houston. Good. Let him go he there. He wants to go back because he has business ventures and everything. Yeah, in there. I mean, there's a great guy to just mentor all those young players, isn't it? it? I mean, it's interesting. Now, has he changed at all? I don't know. I didn't. I don't care for Philly, so I'm always negative against them. Has he changed at all in the selfishness and just? I, I, he would go. Th it seems like he went through, you know, ups and downs with that. You know, some games. He was more of a facilitator and all that. And then there was others where he, you know, obviously wanted the ball more. I mean, he has averaged almost 10 assists a game for how many years he in is. a row. So well, I understand he's that. He's a Hall of Fame player. And right? I do think if James Harden wanted to be Coach James or assistant Coach James, he could really help those young – like Jalen Green could learn a lot from him Yeah, if Harden was willing – to offer up what he knows. That, they're similar players where they're high-volume shooters, right? That is a huge if. Hey, it's a huge if. Yes. But if you can get that guy to do it, I feel like that is a great mentor. Yes. If, if. he wants to play the game. Yes. All right, back to uh, our Detroit Pistons. Uh, still no head coach as of uh, May the 24th. So do they have any like any coaches right now? Like, do they let go of the assistants or no? Because I think they still have assistants who are you, you know working out some of their players. Yeah, you need somebody to do something. Yes, right there now. is a there are people at the combine. There is a draft coming up uh, in July, right? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of important. Yeah, so I you know, I, I think okay. those guys are still on staff. And what we've heard rumors, as they say on the afternoon show here on ninety seven on the ticket, in and, and I've heard from somewhat reliable person in the in the industry is that in the biz yeah and uh, some things he's been right on some things he hasn't but it's like anybody else that uh, 
Kevin Ollie is the favorite choice of Troy Weaver, but there's other people in the organization, whether it's Arn Tellum, whether it's even Tom Gores, whether it's others that aren't so high on Kevin Ollie. And I, if that is the case, I think that is probably why Kevin Ollie's not the head coach as we speak right now. I'm not saying he won't be, but as of right now. And I think with more guys being let go, I think the Pistons should at least talk to, you know, Vogel and Monty Williams and just talk to these guys. So that you might say, you know what? I like what this guy's selling. I mean, I know regardless of the track record, I think he'd be better with this young team. Uh, who knows? What I think the, they should be talking to every yes. last person possible for that coaching position. Right. Um, you know how you say that the rumor is that they're not Troy Weaver and tell them or whomever aren't seeing eye to eye on this. Should Weaver have full autonomy, autonomy, Auto autonomy, autonomy, mm -hmm. autonomy mm -hmm. to hire who he wants? Yes. There should be nobody getting in his way. Well, unless there's, you know, background check information. And that, that I'm saying if everybody's squeaky clean from that respect, he's the general manager. I think he gets to select the coach. Now, tell him, I believe, is the you know president or right below Gores. So on the pecking order, he has more. And obviously, Gores can do whatever he wants. It's his team. I just strongly believe if you're hiring a general manager, he should be able to do his that job. duty is not just requiring players. It's also acquiring a head coach if need be. And I, I think whether, you know, he has no track record at all in hiring a head coach. No, none good or bad. And the only reason I ask that is because if your general manager is setting up your team a certain way mm -hmm. and he is setting it up a certain way, you can see what he is trying to mm -hmm. do, whether or not it's the right way but you would figure he would have a coach in mind that can lead these guys based on what he's putting together. Right. And so maybe that is why he wants Kevin Ali. So Kevin Ali, a lot of people have this mistaken where they think he is the coach of the G league ignite, right? Mm -hmm. No, he is the head of coaching of the G league ignite. So meaning there's three teams that play under this, right. and he's the head of all of this. So is he overseeing everything with all of these teams? The way you read about it is the way that it appears mm -hmm. that he's just overseeing all of this. So if this guy and Kevin Ali has a great grasp on young men and how to teach them and how to get them to the next level, then he is the right guy. Right. But we don't know. We don't know. And that's the question. And we don't know. Hey, look, you look at all these great coaches and there are a lot of great coaches in the NBA. Where did most of them start as assistant coaches? Sure. And Many assistant coaches, they're probably all of them, unless they're coming right from college. Uh, they're either really, really good or they're really, really bad. I mean, a lot of it depends on the roster, too. Well, how much do you think is playing in right now the fact that all these other jobs are open as well? And and right now, if you ask me, the Pistons aren't as attractive as all the others. You look no. at Toronto, you look at Phoenix, you look at Philly. Hell, you might have a Boston opening here in a couple yes. of weeks. So, I mean... If you're a major coach, and some people try to tell me that this is more attractive than Philly, and I'm like, you're out of your mind. No way. Maybe four years down the road, sure, but coaches aren't thinking about that. They're thinking about winning. You have Joel today. Embiid on your team. That is more attractive, with all due respect, to Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Jalen Durant. Period. Right? Right. So, And, I, and I, you also have Tyrese Maxey. And the same with Phoenix. Yes. The same with Boston if it becomes available. Right. Like in Toronto as well. I mean, listen, the is only Toronto th as good as they were? No. But <laughs> they still have better pieces. The I only feel. reason you might want to choose Philly, excuse me, the Pistons over one of those teams that we mentioned is because you want to be in control. Sure. You don't want to have a superstar player try to dictate and wield his his power yield his power around you. That could be the only thing that you are one of these coaches who loves to teach. Like, you know, Larry Brown loved to teach, well, you, you know, know, those type of guys. And I keep going back to our interview that we had with Dwayne Casey. And he mm. said, one thing that really stuck out to me was that they need a different voice. Right. And I'm just curious because Dwayne Casey, just talking to him for the half hour we did. Right is a basketball mind. That's all he's known since mm -hmm. he was 14 years old. And yes, that is most of these coaches. And he might look at it from a more 90s perspective, like to early 2000s perspective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like just the way that you coach with, you know, are they still doing layup lines? Are they doing rudimentary things? Are players thinking they should be doing this and not that? So that's what's interesting to me is 
what would be so different about this coach's voice compared to Dwayne Casey's? Yeah, I, maybe a younger voice. And that's what I'm wondering. Like, but wouldn't you respect the dude that's been in the game for so long compared to a younger guy? Now, he might be closer to you in culture and music right. and and being your everyday friend with it is that what you want out of a it's also it also who you hire is the the good cop if you're the bad cop is the head coach you always have the good cop is the assistant you know sure and well no, no. so darren mccarty always used to tell me this about scotty bowman they hated my man 364 days a year except for on that 365 mm -hmm. when they got that stanley cup right. and that ring yeah it was all good yes so it doesn't matter if you hate the coach right but if he gets you to the promised land that's all that matters yes, right exactly so okay in your ideal world right now who are you hiring that would take this i don't want charles lee i'd rather go after their head coach right Budenholzer, bud i think you get a young try uh, i would take charles lee or collins only for one reason I think those are the guys you take a chance on like Carlisle was here and to take them to a certain level. And then you bring in the veteran guy to be the closer. When, if, if you think that team needs that new voice, then, and you know, the young guy that did all he can do, there's a lot of coaches who can only get a team to a certain level. Right. And then they need to me, again, a guy like, you know, Bud or, or Nick Nurse or somebody like that, Doc Rivers, if for some reason they wanted to come here. That's your closer coach? Like when they're ready, you're saying? Pretty much. I mean, do they want to even go through a rebuild? Yeah, and that's a good question. And it's such a conundrum that we're in because we both love Pistons basketball. Mm -hmm. We both love watching yes. this. And you just think about this young talent and what it could be if it gelled, if it glued, but – how is a young guy going to get through to him teaching defense if an old vet like Casey couldn't do it? You know, know, that he prided himself on defense, right? Yeah. And then when we talk to him about, you know, defending the pick and roll in the NBA compared to college to just all of that stuff, being aware, like in college, most of the time your big guy, he's not popping out, but you need to know mm -hmm. that guy in the NBA level. Is he going to pop? Is he going to roll? All of this different stuff. And man, I don't know what to do. And, and, in all reality, we can't even really narrow it down mm -hmm. because we don't know what the list is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, finally, uh, we're recording this on May the 24th, which is the 19th anniversary of one of the greatest moments in Detroit sports history this century. We're going to get into others on my show with uh, John uh, on the 25th. Is this just the Tayshaun Block? Yes, it is. Wow. Yes. I just literally guessed out yes. of it. And you know what the amazing thing is? So I went and looked at it again today. You know what the score of the game was when he blocked the it was shot? Like Sixty-seven to it was very 69, low. Sixty-nine, sixty-seven. Okay, it was very low. And it's so funny uh, that we look back and we, you know, we sit there and say, "Oh, today's NBA." You know, all they do is shoot threes. They do. They don't play. I mean, we love that team. That was Detroit nuts and bolts. You know, even after the, the bad boys, obviously. But God, if you weren't from here. I mean, they they were, were winning games with college scores. They were it was the 60s, it was the 70s. it was laborious to watch them play. Their defense was great. It was great, but even like we we sit here and the way you remember Chauncey is he couldn't miss a three. You remember Rip, he couldn't miss a jumper. And then you look at the scores and you're like, were they not shooting? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, their coach did not did hated the threes, number one. Sure. Number two is they would milk the shot clock a lot. And great? the other thing is, if you think about it. More so when Carlisle was here, but even, you know, the later part of the run, the Pistons a lot of times were playing four on five. Oh, absolutely. Ben they, had no offensive right, skill. Right, I mean. It was literally the first play of the game. They would feed it to right, Ben to get it out of the way, right, and then like, that was it. Right, it was like, you know, doing a dog a favor. Here's your, here's your biscuit. Be good the rest of the day. I know? wonder how Ben's game would translate to today. You know what I mean? Like, because defense is still important, don't get me yes. wrong. But not – his was being a rim protector. Not a lot of guys take it to the rim like they used to. No, he would. Well, he would definitely play. He would play, but it's just interesting, isn't it? Yeah. To but, drop him as into opposed to somebody game? like Sheed, who played good, but Sheed's oh, game Sheed, would be great today. He would be all NBA. Oh yeah. You'd sit there. What are you doing in the post? Rather than why aren't you in the post? One hundred percent. But even. But that's the great thing about Rasheed Wallace is that, yes, he could extend it out, but his post game was nice. Yes. Well, we, we didn't see it enough. 
No, we didn't. He would get that fadeaway. I mean, that was his logo was his fadeaway jumper. I know. All right. uh, So next week uh, on Restore the Floor, we'll get into the NBA Finals. We'll preview that. And we may have some special guests along the way. I'll be excited for that. Yes, indeed. All right. Have a uh, wonderful Memorial Day. Thank you for listening. Restore the Floor with Evan Jenkins. I'm Stoney. Adios.